Adobe has released a mind-blowing AI that makes poor quality audio sound as though it was recorded in studio. The other day I was baffled to see a clip of 1960s Doctor Who in which the dialogue sounded clearer than I've ever heard, and immediately began racking my brains as to what I could use the technology on. I was brought back to my first ever video in which I state that Kermit the Frog's original voice was recognisable even when muffled by 1950s audio equipment. So this begs the question, what would Jim Henson's original 1950s Kermit voice sound like if it was recorded today? What brought this technology to my attention was this 1960s Doctor Who clip featuring restored audio by at Jules K. Stan on Twitter. Here's the original sound. One day, I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. And here's what you get after a run through Adobe Podcast's new speech enhancer. There must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. You'll get the full effect wearing headphones, but this new audio makes William Hartnell's first Doctor sound crisp as though he was speaking right in front of you, which most people won't ever have heard. I say new audio as it technically is. It's not just cleaning up the background noise, this artificial intelligence is going through and gathering samples before somehow recreating the exact sound of the original voice in a higher quality, which is genius, insane, and slightly terrifying at the same time. In regards to Kermit's voice, the clips I'm using come from Sam and Friends, a local television series broadcast in the 1950s, being the first appearance of Kermit and one of the earliest examples of Henson's work. Due to the amateur nature of the show and its setup, coupled with the fact that any episodes that actually survived are old and deteriorating recordings, the audio quality is even lower than the aforementioned Doctor Who clip. I began to doubt that this would work at all, but the results are surprising and interesting. I'm going to play a clip now and alternate between the original and enhanced audio, which will be denoted on screen. I'm honored to be in the studio with two very distinguished NBC newsmen, and I'm going to chat with them a few minutes to learn something of their off-camera personalities. You know how when a newsman is giving his news, he's so self-controlled and precise? Well, we want these two guys just to relax and enjoy a couple moments of pleasant conversation. What sticks out to me is that the AI interprets the feedback from sibilance in the audio, that's any harsh S sounds, as a part of the dialogue itself which essentially gives Kermit a lisp in some of the enhanced audio that wasn't present in the original. But never mind them, just relax and be yourself, you know. First let's talk about all-time great newsmen. Now if you were to name the best newsmen you know, I guess you'd name Edward R. Murrow, Morgan Beatty. It seems to struggle a bit with the unique sound of Kermit's voice in contrast with the news reporter's straight tones coming out clear as day. Well, why don't you just call me Kermit and I'll call you, uh, uh, well, what would you like me to call you? Chet Huntley. Oh, okay, Chet Huntley. But overall, I was surprised by parts of Kermit's speech that match up perfectly with later and higher quality recordings of the character as portrayed by Henson. Hmm. Five. Hmm. Hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm taking a course in visual thinking. It teaches you how to visualize your thoughts. Watch. The most interesting aspect is that it picks up quirks present in the original recording that I didn't notice the first time round. For example, the news reporter's name originally sounded like Sir Hutley. I couldn't really decipher it. But following the enhancement, I started to hear Chet Hutley. Here first we have Chet Hutley, NBC News, New York. I'd never heard of this name before, but upon googling it, there was indeed such a person who worked for NBC News during the 1950s. Now, for anyone who already knew of them, that's probably nothing big, but for the original words to be accurately clarified like this is astounding. You know, Dave, NBC has such a great news staff, but CBS does a good job too. Oh, where do you suppose they get all their news tips? NBC News. 
Additionally, Kermit has a sort of South American accent here, which I didn't notice before. Well, I see the two brothers that have a high opinion of NBC News are Chet Huntley and David Binkley. And this makes sense as Henson was born in Mississippi, though this attribute fizzled out as the character became refined in later performances. Chew! See that? Man, you're just a beginner. I'm an old hand at this stuff. Watch! Hey, a real watch! With more than Clark's no less. Gee! But the voice does sound more noticeably different now that it's not muffled. At first you could assume that the AI simply got the voice wrong, however I'm of the opinion that these softer and higher pitched tones actually represent Henson's younger age at the time, which was 18? Christ. It's only getting bigger. I know, I'm not saying the first thing backwards, I'm saying something new. Well keep trying. By the time Kermit appeared on Sesame Street, which boosted his popularity, Henson was in his 30s, and when the character became mainstream on The Muppet Show, he was in his 40s, so you'd imagine the voice would change quite drastically during this stretch of time, but it didn't really. Aside from the higher pitch and more pronounced southern accent of this early Kermit, who wasn't even a frog yet, he's very much the same character, despite all these small details being fascinating nonetheless. See what could happen, don't you? No, what? It's gonna erase us! Oh no! Yeah. Help! Keeping in theme with the Muppets, I also tried this on one of the ITV digital ads featuring Monkey and Al. This is one I've only found recently, but in terrible quality. It's only from the early 2000s, but ads in general have a habit of not being recorded in the best quality. Dear Kylie. Monkey! Oh! Just had a brilliant idea! Oh dear. I know what you can get on your monkey bags for Christmas! Go on. An ITV digital box! They could plug it in on Christmas morning! Once again, this gives Al a lisp, but I was impressed by how well it captured his iconic voice and vanquished the hideous levels of interference. Al, that's actually brilliant! They all come from up here, my monkey chum! So, as for this artificial intelligence developed by Adobe, it's very much the audio equivalent of a deepfake. At the moment, I think we're at Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian, but the more people use this, I imagine it'll collect data to iron out any imperfections, and before you know it, we'll be at Luke Skywalker in The Book of Boba Fett, which was a huge step up in such a short amount of time. I say in 10 years, maybe, I think you could have a deceased actor appear in a film convincingly through deepfakes and this audio sampling technology. Is it ethically correct? Probably not, it's a bit weird, but I can't help but find this stuff absolutely fascinating. It's likely already possible to enhance this audio further, though that would require expensive software and extensive knowledge on the subject, whereas this is a free online tool, and in just a couple of minutes, I've heard Kermit the Frog's original voice in unprecedented clarity for the first time. Where it's at now is already impressive, but considering this is a beta accessible to the public, this stuff's going to be normalised pretty soon. But what do you think of the whole thing? Personally, if this technology improves, I'd be up for them remastering old footage this way for all of the aforementioned franchises. As it stands, it's not quite there yet, but it's pretty damn cool. So if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.